Mo, thank you so much for the visit, and uh, best wishes to you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Mo Tharp, the coach at Palatine Friend, our guest here at the Assembly Hall, and we'll be back after this message. This telecast is being sponsored by the American Dairy Association of Illinois, your local dairy farmer, delivering to you their very best every day. The Illinois Beef Council, beef, real food for real people. John Deere and your local John Deere dealer. The country companies and their more than 900 agents throughout Illinois. You've got the country behind you. And the Illinois Pork Producers Association. The 10,000 pork producers in Illinois encourage you to try the new lean, nutritious pork, the other white meat. Our guest is Bob Bogle, the skipper of the Centralia Orphans, and we've known Bob a goodly number of years, and uh, you had to play this East St. Louis club in the super sectional. Now I understand the final score. Well, we got beat by about uh, four touchdowns. I, I think it ended up something like uh, 69 to 41, and uh, we were just overwhelmed. They've got a fine ball club. I know I was talking to your superintendent, the guy was a pretty fair basketball coach himself, Don Stanton, last year. And he said, you know, it's in training. We feel we might have the only team in Southern Illinois that can uh, battle these guys on the boards. Well, you lost a lot of those people, but obviously you had a pretty good team this year, Bob. Well, we won 13 of our last 17, Art. We had a player go down with a uh, broken wrist the first game of the season, missed 20 games, but we came back strong. How tough the South 7 these days? It uh, it's, uh, hasn't changed in nature, but a couple of those clubs are eight schools, aren't they? Well, it was, it's balanced, but, but really, Art, uh, you know, it's a different world. Uh, East St. Louis Lincoln, uh, just so much better than everyone else down south. Uh, it, it's like men against boys. You know, we were talking uh, first quarter of the ball game. Lafonso Ellis doesn't score a point. Was the most dominant player on the floor, clearly. Oh, without a without a fact, uh, we get eight shots inside the lane, uh, and seven of them are blocked. And then here against Evanston, he dishes the ball off, rebounds, and he does it all. Well, let's plug a couple of your Centralia kids. Uh, you made it to the uh, super sectional. Who are your leaders? Well, our, probably our best player is inside player, six, four and a half, John Adams, senior. Uh, averaged 18 for us, had a real good season for us. Well, the situation, of course, every year, everybody shoots for uh, for the assembly hall, and they go as far as they can go. The big question, is East St. Louis as good as they look tonight? Well, I, I think they are. Uh, you know, I don't know how, uh, how they would compare to last year. They're going to miss the two big kids that they had last year. But every one of their players can shoot the ball. They're quick, they rebound. Uh, I don't know if they've got really any weaknesses. Lafonso's well, better than he was a year ago, uh, clearly, isn't he? No doubt. And, and they're so much better now than they were in December. I, I don't think they've uh, been beaten since December. Well, they're an outstanding club. There's no question about that. And uh, certainly a credit to your team and the kind of season you had. Marion was real tough in your league, weren't they? Right. We were really fortunate. Uh, they got knocked off in the regional final. And we, we had a difficult time matching up with Marion. They had beaten us twice during the regular season. What's happened to our old friend David Lee? Uh, we remember David as a perennial visitor here at uh, McLeansboro. He's over at West Frankfurt now. And uh, he is back to double-A status, isn't he? Well, he's hoping for Class A next year. He's right on the borderline. He's I think he's got his fingers crossed to uh, see what his uh, enrollment status is going to be next year. That's the fact that we don't talk about too much in the state, but there is a lot of bouncing back and forth. Schools right on the border, and uh, I know most coaches that prefer to go the smaller school class, but uh, well, you never know. Well, it's a lot of fun down south. Uh, you know, you, at least you have a chance in Class A. Double A, uh, you know, you're going to run into East Side uh, most yeah. of the time, and that just makes it extremely tough. Bob, well, it's really good to see you, and congratulations on a great job. Thank you, Art. Bob Bogle, the coach of the Centralia Orphans out of the South 7 Conference, member of the Sweet 16, and we'll be back following this message from one of your network sponsors. Which? There is one more quarterfinal game left to play today. Aurora East will take on Peoria Manuel. The coach of Aurora East joins me right now. Scott Martin, a couple of coaches across the state have taken a look at your team and said, quote, that's the quickest team I've ever seen. Is it the quickest team you've ever seen? Well, it's uh, the quickest one I've ever had. I know Manuel's awful quick. I don't know if we're quicker than they are. Uh, that's why they have 28 wins. We uh, pass most of the game full court, and uh, we're going to do it tonight. And when you talk bench, you've got one. We go nine deep, and, uh, you know, I don't know how many of those nine we'll use in the second half. But all, all nine to see uh, action in the first half. 
as far as sophomore players go, you have maybe one of the better ones in the entire state. His name is Thomas Wyatt, hitting at about 24 points a game. You think he's kind of overlooked. I know you're probably a little prejudiced, but he's a good one. Well, he's 24 points a game, 11 rebounds, and he's got almost 100 steals. And for a center, that's just excellent. He put, uh, his strong suit is his quickness. He's very, very quick for 6'5", and he plays the point of our press. So we need him to get some steals tonight. Coach, I talked to you right before we came on the air. I know you're loose. Did you allow your team to see any games today? What was? What is their makeup? What are you trying to do to keep them loose? Well, we're horsing around in the locker room a little bit. We didn't come to, to watch the afternoon session, but we did see St. Louis Lincoln play uh, the first half tonight. Uh, I hope they're relaxed, but, you know, I don't think the pressure's on us anymore because we've been favorites for 29 games, and now we're the underdog, and maybe that'll relax us a little. The reason you're the underdog is Fiore Emanuel, of course. One quick question. What scares you about him? Everything? Well, I'll tell you, if David Booth did 40 tonight, we're in trouble. So he's, he's the guy that scares me. And he got 40 just three nights ago. Yeah. All right, Coach, good luck to you. We'll talk to you later. That's Scott Martins. Let's go now to Mr. McKay and Benny Lewis. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Benny, congratulations. Of course, Benny Lewis, the coach of the Tough Tigers from East St. Louis, Lincoln, the defending champs. And looks to me like the champion is still very much alive, Mr. Lewis. Right, well, we hope so. Our guys are playing real well now, and we just hope we can keep it up. Your losses have come to some very interesting ball clubs. What do you drop? Two of the four losses have been out of state powers or three of the four? Uh, I think we lost, uh, let's see, we lost to Houston. We lost to uh, Indian Rivers with Lawn in the morning. And we lost to uh, Jacksonville. And we lost to uh, Lincoln, Illinois. Yeah, so uh, that schedule has been very demanding. But obviously playing those real good teams nationally helped you. Right, uh, we we knew we had some good talent. What we had to do was, you know, get them tested with some, you know, good good teams. So when they set up the seven up shootout and and we played Alonzo morning and we learned a lesson. We lost the ball game, but we learned a va you know a valuable lesson out of. It. We have to at least mention the tremendous improvement of Lafonso Wellis. He just last year he was a great player, but tonight uh, I made the comment to Bob Ogle from Centralia. First quarter didn't score a point, most dominant guy in the arena. Right, he, he's been playing like that ever since the Collinsville tournament. We've, uh, since he's taken over the middle and, 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 you know, guarded that for us, we can go out and try and trap the ball and do, you know, do other things. As long as he do that, he'll block the shot or two and get it to us and we can come down and score off of it. We've been doing that real well the last 15 ball games or so. You will be watching this next one very, very closely in preparation for tomorrow. Very much so. We know that manual is tough and, and Aurora is playing real good ball. So so we're going to have to scout both the ball players. Benny, the champ is still alive. Congratulations to you. All right, thank you very much. Benny Lewis, the skipper, East St. Louis Lincoln, and now Mr. Van Syok and Mr. Albrecht standing by. Jim? Thank you, Art. It's been a long day. I'm calling everybody McKay, maybe too many Olympics. Jim McKay. With me, of course, the gentleman, if you're familiar with Illinois basketball at all, you know about his exploits, you know about his team. Mr. Dick Van Syok is here. How much does the memory burn from last year, the quarterfinal game? Did you dedicate the season to that moment when Quincy shot you down in OT and you were heavily favored? I, I had just forgotten all about that until you brought it up. Now, here you go refreshing my memory again. Let's forget last year. What about this year? Why so good? I mean, Booth and Collins, obviously, the catalyst to your team, but there's more to it than that. Well, we had pretty good chemistry on our, our ball club, and we were playing, uh, hoping that we could make the 50 campaign again, and... We didn't have a very good year because we lost four games, but we're here. Did you play the regular season any differently? I read somewhere where you said, well, let's gear it up towards tournament time. Let's not try to wipe everybody out here during the regular season. Any truth to that? Well, we had a bone chip in Lynn uh, Collins' ankle, which bothered him for maybe a month after he uh, even got back. He had to get back in shape. David Booth was sick with the flu for a while. But uh, we didn't try to lose any ball games. We just went into some awfully good talent. Uh, Fury High was awfully good. Thornridge had a good ball club. And we ran into a real, real fine Springfield. So we those are the four games we lost. No people deserved to win. Dick, have you ever seen a freshman faster than the one that we'll see here tonight, the one you have playing for you? For me, uh, uh, Howard uh, Nathan is the quickest freshman I've had. And uh, he, uh, he doesn't look like a freshman out here, believe me. What about Aurora East? They run up and down the floor. Are we going to see something like Churchill Downs here tonight? They tell me that East Aurora is a lot like Jerry High.
by Furious Central, and Furious Central is just awfully explosive and awfully quick. I just hope that we can keep up with them. Do you ever lose the feeling? You've been down here a lot. I know you haven't gotten the big one yet, and I know you know that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. I don't know what how badly you want it inside, but does your feelings change every time you come down here, or is it business as usual? Business as usual. Uh, the big one uh, isn't uh, any worry to me at all. Uh, I'm happy for the for the kids, the student body, the, the city of Peoria. Those are the things that uh, I know those people are watching, and that's what makes this important. Final question. The people at the IHSA must think you guys are nice people in Peoria. Always draw that last game of the quarterfinals. There's a lot of controversy, or at least people are looking at how many champions ever came out of the last game, and the odds are the champions come out of the first bracket played in the afternoon. Do you, do you mind playing at night? Well, if I worried about that, that'd be just one more burden on my shoulders. We're just happy to be playing, and uh, as I told someone yesterday, we'll let the chips fall where they may, and uh, we're, we're just happy to be here, and, and we're not going to worry about whether we're playing first or last. Coach, let's let them fall. Good luck. Fine. My pleasure. That is Dick Van Syak of Peoria Manual. Let's go back to Frank Bissoni. Thank you very much, Jim, and we're waiting now for the fourth quarter final of the day, and we've had three winners. Chicago St. Francis de Sales, 28-1, is in the semifinals against Rock Island, and they're joined tonight by a powerhouse East St. Louis Lincoln team, and there are two more waiting, Coach, and both of them are dead quick. You're here, Coach Van Syke, and says, we didn't have a very good year this year. We lost four games. I did hear him. <laughs> <laughs> and he he misquoted there and just uh, got his tongue tied or what? Holy smokes. You know what's going to be uh, fun, I think, in this game is that uh, we're going to see some old-time enthusiasm out of the crowd. Absolutely. The teams will go to 94 feet. Thomas Wyatt, the sophomore center for uh, East Aurora, 6'5", and explosively quick, goes up against 6'6", six, six, David Booth in the middle for Peoria Emanuel. And uh, I'll tell you, I expect a game tonight that's a real shootout, maybe in the 70s and 80s. Uh, I'd be very surprised if it's not. Again, similar teams as far as defense goes. Uh, you'll see some man-to-man -man press. You'll see some zone press. Uh, you're going to see a lot of running. Uh, I think it's going to be real interesting. When you're a coach and you have two teams that really get up and down the floor, what's the key? What things are going to decide who wins? Well, I think turnovers, you know, for one. And uh, you got to be sure that you get uh, good shots when you are on your fast break. It's uh, one thing to run up and down the court, but you got to finish off that fast break with a good shot and, of course, the hoop. Emmanuel Rams from the Mid-State 10 in Peoria County, the Orange and Black. Aurora in Kane County in the Upstate 8 Conference, the Black and Red. This is the fourth double-A appearance by the Tomcats of East Aurora. And for the Rams, their 15th overall double-A and their third consecutive appearance under Dick Van Syak, a graduate of Illinois Wesleyan, 22 years at uh, Peoria Manual, 39 years in coaching, and Bill Geis, Dick Van Syak, has coached basketball in high school in Illinois in parts of five decades. But, uh, you know, it's amazing how he stayed with it keeps his enthusiasm and get, keeps coming down here. Uh, you think you get a little tired of all that, but uh, obviously with the good players he has and the program that he has, uh, he just keeps on being successful one year after another. Scott Martin is a graduate of Illinois State, and his three years is 71 and 19 at East Aurora. It must be a lot of fun for him, too. 15 and 10, then 25 and 5, and now 28 and 1. And this is the first trip to Champaign for East Aurora since 1972, and there's got to be that community feeling. You've been down here as a coach in uh, what, three in a row, and well, that's what I was saying about the old-time enthusiasm. The people in Aurora love their basketball. Whether they're winning or losing, I think they love their basketball, but they know how to have fun, and they've come down here uh, in droves, and there's a lot of red up there and uh, a lot of East Aurora fans, and, and uh, we saw a picture of it. Oh, there, there's a picture of it, too. They just like to make uh, uh, some noise and cheer, and they're going to have some fun. East Aurora and Peoria Manuel were set to meet the players and being cares Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for this fourth and final quarterfinal round game featuring the Tomcats of East Aurora High School and the Rams of Peoria Manuel. First, for East Aurora High School of Aurora, entering this game with a record of 28 wins and one loss the head coach in his third season, Scott Martin. Assistant coaches, Bob Jungles and Mike Gossett. And now the players. Number 11, a six foot junior, Tyrone Savage. Number 13, a six one senior, Garen Gilkey. 
Number 21, a 5'10 junior, Mark Oliver. Number 25, a 5'10 junior, Lee Claiborne. Number 35, a 6'1 junior, Daryl Brown. Number 45, a 5'11 senior, Thomas Flint. And number 51, a 5'10 junior, Lamar Bedford. And now the starting lineup for East Aurora. At one forward, a 6'1 senior, 15, John Young. Young, a fine defensive player, averaging five a game. At the other forward, a six-foot senior, number 31, Kenny Gray. Gray averages 56% field goal shooting. At center, a 6'5 sophomore, 41, Thomas Wyatt. Over 24 points a game. At one guard, a 5'11 senior, number 23, James Polk. Playmaker averaging eight a game. And at the other guard, a 6'1 senior, number 33, Darrell Williams. Averaging more than 19 per contest. Those are the Tomcats of East Aurora High School. And now, let's meet the Rams of Manuel High School of Peoria, entering this game with a record of 27 wins and 4 losses. First, the head coach in his 22nd season, Dick Van Sayak. Assistant coaches Wayne McLean, Jerry Stoll, Chuck Westendorf, and Ken Meissner. And now the players. Number 10, a 5'10 sophomore, Terry Washington. Number 14, a 5'8 senior, John Deal. Number 40, a 5'9 junior, Rick Morgan. Number 44, a 6'4 senior, James Shuttleworth. Number 50, a 6'3 senior, Jerry Williams. Number 52, a 6'8 junior, Tom Wilson. And number 54, a 6 foot senior, Demetrius Clements. And now the starting lineup for Peoria Manuel. At one forward, a 6'1 junior, 32, Ken Sidner. A great pure shooter, had 25 in the super. At the other forward, a 6'1 junior, 42, Damon Hendrick. He's in there because of his defense. At center, a 6'5 senior, number 30, David Booth. Outstanding offensive rebounder, averaging 23. At one guard, a 5'10 freshman. Number 34, Howard Mason, as quick as they come. And at the other guard, a six-foot senior, number 20, Lynn Collins. A great athlete, Manuel wants the ball in his hands. Those are the Rams of Peoria Manuel. And now the officials for this fourth and final quarterfinal round game, Kurt Anderson of St. Charles and Ruben Norris of Chicago. We'll be back in a moment. One of your network sponsors is Country Company. Aurora's in Kane County in the Upstate 8 Conference. Of course, Peoria from Central Illinois in the Midstate 10 Conference. The Tomcats have lost one game by one point to Rockford East in a Christmas tournament. The Rams have lost to Peoria Central, a powerhouse, twice to Thorn Ridge and to Springfield. East Aurora nip friend in overtime at DeKalb, 72-68 before 5,218 to get here. Peoria Manuel blitz Jacksonville by 20. There are your starting matchups. Going to the middle, a pair of brilliant performers, Booth 30, Thomas Wyatt 41. Manuel in white, Aurora starts with the ball in red. Violation to start the game. Wyatt jumped a little bit too quick on the jump. We're starting off with pressure here. This is what East Aurora will do the whole game. Wall-to-wall -wall pressure. We expect in the entire game. This is Howard Nathan, a freshman, 5'10". His dad played for Coach Van Sayak in the late 60s, early 70s. Sidner, right wing, Collins in the corner. 
Heath goes to the middle. You'll see a lot of quickness and strength in this game. Lynn Collins doesn't keep them there. Nathan going against John Young outside. Young number 15. Sidner prefers to shoot over his own. Throws it away. And the contact on the hustle. James Folk. Strip the picked up by Ox Young. Now they're two big players of 33, Williams and Wyatt. Rebound to Sidner. Transition game manual. David Booth. We're going to see a lot of that, Frank, running up and down. Well, the Tomcats have seen clean some people. They've got 111 in one game and 100 more in a couple, three others. Foul on Manuel as Darrell Williams goes in. There's such a thing as a crucial foul with two minutes gone in the game or a minute gone in the game. Uh, there's one that David Booth picked it up. Certainly, uh, Coach Van Fyre doesn't want him to get in foul trouble. David Boog is headed for the call. This is Darrell Williams. He had 30 points in his super sectional win. He always had a fantastic season. He leads the team in a fifth, and he's second in scoring and rebounding on the team. Not bad for 6 6 1. Strong. Williams missed that short. Lynn Collins comes up with it for the Rams. The fan factors were on a mission. Collins hit. 4 to 1 manual. Kenny Gray is 31 in the back with Williams. Williams closed by his man on the right. Gets hung up. Nice job defensively by Damon Hendrick. And Collins moves up. Little shake moving shot. Williams tried to save it and said the Rams have it. Wait, wait, wait. Part of the problem you have when you're playing a team that fast breaks a lot is to hustle back and get, get your man. Uh, the last time down, East Aurora had a hard time picking up and Collins got that easy 15 footer. David Booth, a little bounce shot. That was just a lot to the big man. I did a nice job of keeping the ball above his head. His feet hit the floor, he went up and took a nice easy jumper. In the super sectional game, he had 20 field goals and 40 points. Six to one, Manuel. On the, trying to get the ball to Thomas Wyatt down low. East Aurora throws it away. The Tomcats, one of their people told me that Scott Martin made 38 substitutions in their last game. Garen Gilkey, 13, a 6 one senior, comes in there. Collins. Blows into the front court to Sidner. Tries the layup and is fouled by Williams. What makes East Aurora's press effective is that we've got Wyatt at the point. Now he's about 6'4", 5'. He's got long arms, and that creates a lot of problems. Now what uh, Manuel did that time is quickly get the ball up to half court. It was really a three-on-two advantage going down court. So I think what they're going to do is attack East pressure. And uh, if it works, it's, it's very successful because you're going right at the strength of East Aurora. One of the key players here for the Rams, Ken Sidner, key because he takes scoring pressure off of Booth and Collins with his ability to hit the outside shot. And away with the way these teams change defenses, I think uh, the viewers are going to see different looks. Could be almost every, every time down court. East Aurora's press that time was a 1-2-2 zone, but they'll go to 1-2-1-1 two, one, one, as well as man-to-man. -man. And the Rams miss the free throws. The Tomcats bring the ball up. John Young in the back with Williams. Blocking foul on Howard Mason. Good call, I thought. Mason is a half step from getting there. See if we can see it here. I didn't think he was set. I thought he leaned in, but... Those things are so hard to call. Even on replay, they think they're hard. These officials don't have that advantage. Garen Gilkey, his dad, Drail, played for the West Aurora team in 1960. Inside Wyatt. Nice reverse. 
It's a great shot because I think Booth would have blocked it if he would have gone to the strong side of the hoop. But he went to the other side and used the rim as a, kind of a, a defensive person. First goal for the Tomcats. Booth tries to answer and misses. He's got an offensive rebound. He got it. Nice shot. Little shot there. Little jump hook. One of the strengths of Booth's game is offensive rebounding. Manual by 5, 522 first quarter. Booth impressed me last year, too, in having a variety of shots. Guilty, let's go. Can't hit. Collins on the move. Nathan with a stop and pop. Look at Wyatt rebound and get the ball out. Guilty is in. Manuel by three with the ball. Nathan needs help. Look at that pass. He threw it at the ceiling. Collins has got it for a deuce. Well, that was a prayer that was in the That's kind of a freshman mistake, I'd say, for such a thing. Both teams have the throttle set at about 200% here in the early going. On the fly, Darrell Williams missed. Manuel quickly the other way. Sidner, 14-footer. Are you tired yet, Frank? <laughs> 12 to 5. The Rams explode out of the block. Nice catch by Gilkey. Wyatt a complete 360, and Collins stepped out of bounds. For the Rams, Demetrius Clements comes in. Damon Hendricks out. For the Tomcats, Daryl Brown, 35, is in. John Young sits down. And East Aurora also gets Mark Oliver into the game. As Scott Martin says, they go nine deep. Manual will play the four players most of the time and rotate the fifth position with about five people. Wyatt catches and turns, and Booth got two fouls early. substitutions in East Aurora. With East Aurora, Wyatt and Williams stay in the game most of the time. They'll rotate the other three guys, but they've got to have Wyatt and Williams in the game, I think, to be successful. That was an off, uh, that was a good block he had. I would assume he called it with the body. It looked like a very good block to me, though. What a sophomore. 6'5", 24 plus a game. And 11 rebounds a game. Thomas Wyatt, W-Y-A-T-T. -T. He tries to cut the manual lead to five. Four, 11 on the clock. The Rams against the pressure, walking on Clement. Just into the game, against pressure, traveling. This is what got East Aurora here, that full court pressure all the time. Darrell Williams, really good frame on him, 185 pounder. Manuel's in the zone now, traveling on Darrell Williams just before he buried a J. Manuel pops into his zone. East Aurora stays with their pressure. Z Wyatt, this right here is man pressure, I think. Booth comes back to help. Nathan Walk. He looked at the official as if to say, you anticipated it. The official shook his head, walked the other way. Now the Tomcats have it back. You'll see a lot of exchanges of possession. Lob to Williams. He tipped with the left hand. Out of bounds to East Aurora. I think it's going to be a tough game to officiate. We've got two of the best in the state in Kurt Anderson and Ruben North. The turnovers, Rams with three. Tomcat two. Quickness, jumping ability, Williams. Darrell Williams knocks it in. The Tomcats are within three. Clements had nowhere to go. He bounced it off Wyatt and back out of bounds. Look at this pressure. Lynn Collins swings up ahead to David Booth. The senior co-captains and Booth is traveling. 
and the Rams haven't been accustomed to teams putting this much pressure on them. Peoria Central can, as Dick Van Zyck said, but very few teams are quick enough to do it. Well, Easter, we've heard about their quickness, and I'll tell you, then, uh, when Manuel's taking the ball out of bounds, they're right in the Manuel player's shot. Inside Williams again. Good again. He can light it up. A one-point game, and the Rams have lost the momentum, and a steal and a dunk. Thomas Wyatt took it away and buried it. That's why Wyatt is so tough. He's so down tall. He's got those long arms. He'll get a few of those again. Time out on the court. East Aurora has taken the lead. One of your network sponsors, the American Dairy Association of Illinois. Unrelenting pressure, the name of the game on defense. And the Tomcats do it like this. Well, they're so quick, and they're staying right with it. Well, of course, there's a, he tried to bang the ball off of Wyatt like he did the time before. Only uh, Wyatt smartened up a little bit and backed off, and he wound up getting the ball for the dunk. Now Manuel needs to answer with Lynn Collins in the back, along with Demetrius Clement. Booth on wing right. Booth puts it in high gear. He goes all the way, throws it up, and this. Out of bounds to the Rams. He gets that press, I think you have to make a decision. Do you want to attack it? Do you want to just speed it and set up your half-court offense? I think what Manuel should do is you got to take what they give you. If you have an opportunity, try to beat it. But if not, just get the ball past half-court and set up your offense. Good not miss. And the contact. Bring Darrell Williams all the way to the lane for a shot. Manuel rebound. Lots of enthusiasm in the arena tonight. Collins. Moves the ball. Wheels the ball to Clement. Reverse. Great pass, and then a very good shot, too. Manuel gets the lead back at 2.35. The Rams set a 2-3 zone. The pound really makes this uh, Manuel team go, doesn't he, Frank? He does. They go under his whip. He's a, a leader. He's strong. He's got calls for traveling. There'll be times when he might play a little wild or out of control. There's other times when he's just awesome. John Young checks in 15. Manuel could be just getting used to this East Aurora quickness a little bit. It seems like Manuel's trying to go just a little bit too fast. We've had a couple, three uh, traveling violations. Mark Oliver sends the ball inbound. And the Tomcat shoots for the lead. Darrell Williams. Oh, nice rebound up and down. Darrell Brown. The second mate was John Young to tip that in. Offensive board. Collins three on one for the Rams. He pulls up. It's in. Manuel's on to the zone to protect Booth with the two fouls. So absolutely. I, I, I was under the impression they like to play a lot more man to man than the zone. There's a lob in the Wyatt. The sophomore turns and shoots it down. Aurora by one. Sidner's open. He can shoot from there. Yes, he can. He won't put the ball on the floor a lot, but he can drill it. Darrell Williams brings it up on the left. Kenny Gray goes to the wing on the left. Oliver Wright. Williams hit. You can't let him hit. Same way you can't let Sidner have that shot down there. You can't let Williams have the shot here. And again, the lead exchanges hands. East Aurora will get a couple of more... Substitution. 35, Darrell Brown, 23, James Polk, back on the court. Williams gets his first rest. They change players, but they don't change defenses. Collins catches up with it. Not a lot of players could have. Sidner's on the right. Goes into Booth with a turnaround. Ooh, Thomas Wyatt speared it. 105 in the first. The Tomcats by one. Folk, 25 feet away. Wyatt's outside. You know what's amazing about Wyatt? You watch him shoot. It doesn't look good. He doesn't release the ball right. There's no spin on the ball. All it does is go the hoop every time. And he's got 10. And Manuel says timeout. 45 seconds to go in the quarter. We'll be right back. Now let's pause for these messages. The Tomcats of East Aurora have the assembly hall rocking as they put on a run to take the lead over Manuel 28, 21 to 18. 
and they've done it with outstanding defense and field goal shooting like this. Nine of 16, 56 percent. The Rams not so shabby either, 60 percent. Sidner way outside. Mark Oliver has it. Traveling. Whistles the turnovers. We got a lot of quick feet out there. They're just moving a little bit too quick, I think. That'd be a, that last shot by Sidner. He's wide open. Uh, evidently, East Aurora had a missed defensive assignment. He's, they're lucky he didn't throw that one. Clement sends it in. The Rams with 25 seconds to go in the quarter. Collins comes to the foul line and fades. Thomas Wyatt snapped with the rebound. Remember, Booth has two fouls. He got this one. 15 seconds. Howard Nathan threw it up. He didn't know what time there was on the clock. Still 10 seconds. And the Tomcats may go for one with five. Shot is up by Spolt. Rebound to Booth at one. That's the quarter. At the end of one, the Tomcats over the Rams by three. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. We're in the fourth quarter final match of the day. Rebounding so important. There you have a missed shot, and there's a nice tip by one of the smaller guys on the court. That's where uh, you've got to pick your teammate up. You don't assume he's going to make it. You get yourself in there, assume he's going to miss it, so you're ready for the rebound. Dick Van Sayak looks on at the end of one. His team is down by three. Earlier today, Chicago Simeon went down to the sales. Rock Island won, and East St. Louis Lincoln was a powerhouse. What a foul. Frank, I know you've seen the manual play quite a bit, but are you surprised with East Aurora? I guess so. I guess they, uh, their, their depth and their quickness. We'll take a look at their stats. Aurora has 53%, the manual 50. Free throwing, but Comcast three out of four. Manual has two more rebounds, committed one more turnover. Darrell Williams. A running one-hander, Ken Sidner. Manual's within one. Aurora has good depth, quickness, great court sense. Blocked by Booth. Manual running with Collins. He leaves it for David Booth. Sidner. His clock goes out. Nice rebound inside to the Rams. Clements gets it down. Manual takes the lead. Let's see whether it'll be Williams on the outside or they try to go into the box with the Wyatt. They do. Wyatt turns and puts it home. Manuel's back to their man-to-man uh, -man defense. I think they'd like to play, but Booth is not guarding Wyatt anymore. Whistle and a foul on the Tomcat. Picked up by Daryl Brown. <laughs> the official just said, come on, to the players waiting to come in. John Deal making the first appearance for the Rams. With Clements arrest for Aurora Mark Oliver out there. And we're set. The winner of this game will play East St. Louis Lincoln in the semifinals tomorrow. Lynn Collins, an all-stater. Hanging in the air. Darrell Williams. Open court. Collins stole it. Might have won. Look at the swarming pressure by the Tomcats. Turnover on Manuel. Manuel gets Tom Wilson into the game, and David Booth goes out for a ref. Wilson, 6'8", junior. There's your turnovers. The Rams with eight. Wyatt takes and goes. That's the eighth turnover on Aurora. Had the right idea though as a defensive man was playing them real tight that little fake and he was, would have been open but he's got to put the ball on the ground just a little bit sooner you see thomas wyatt will guard lynn collins he's six five in the center and he's the point of their pressure nearly a hundred steals on the season howard nathan the freshman in the front collins twirls and fires the ball gets it back 
three-second violation on the ram. That was one half too many that time. See, when you overpass, there's a tendency to have one of your players in the lane too long because they're expecting the shot a little bit earlier, and they wait and wait, and then they wind up getting the call for three-second violation. Tom gets by one. Nathan almost got it. Deal pokes it at it. See who's got it this time. It's a little wild. There's some flurries out here. Is it when, again, in a game like this, you're going to have some flurries of excellent basketball, and you're going to have some flurries of some pretty mediocre basketball. Look at the ball. Double, triple team inside. Wilson steps in and is fouled. That's a great pass, though. Great pass. Wilson planted on the, on the block there, and he's going to get two free throws. Is that Nathan that made the pass? Great vision here. Obvious foul, he got him right on the arm. Darrell Williams, the foul. Scott Martin from Illinois State, class of 73. Wilson, the defender, shot blocker, rebounder. The game is tied at 23. 5.55 in the first half. Wilson, one of two. Oliver brings it up. Williams comes to the right. Nathan picks his pocket. Foul, Williams, two in a row. That's a big play because Darrell Williams is one of the key players for the Tomcats. Three fouls on Williams. That's very important because he's by far the best outside shooter. He, he takes some of that pressure off of Wyatt. He does, and he's got a 19-point average. Booth is out for Manuel with two fouls, six points. Collins. Collins goes all the way. Bank it in. Very good control of his body in the ball. Took his time and just kind of weaved his way through. He averages 17. Tomcats come back to answer. Folks outside. Daniel nearly got the ball. Kenny Gray picks it off. And Folks sets up. Daniel by two. Thomas Wyatt couldn't get that one. Now the Tomcats turn it over. And John Young checks in for Kenny Gray. East Aurora, when they do set it up, I think they ought to have a little bit more patience. John Deal in the back. Those are Collins. If you can beat the press, sometimes you can shoot layups. But you got to beat the press. Collins does it alone. I was just going to say, I don't think that's a good choice because he was going so quick. But he stopped on a diamond, went straight up and put it down. Ten points, Collins. Both miss. Manual by four. Thomas Wyatt. Boom. Nathan blows into the front court, stops at the foul line. Didn't get it. Folk comes back to the Tomcat. 4.25 on the clock. Foul on Howard Nathan. And now David Booth checks back in for Manuel. And for the first time, they'll have Booth and 6'8", Tom Wilson in the game at the same time. Deal sits down. That's going to present a matchup problem for East Aurora. The Wyatt can take one of them, but they don't really have anybody to take the other man. James Folk, 72% free throw shooter. They got the nice throw. Folk, 5'11", and a senior. This one to tie it. Quit. There's Wyatt Crescent. Manual comes in the booth. Double team goes through. Collins is on the wing right. Three-point shot. 
Booth goes for the offensive board. Wilson's on the floor. East Aurora thought he walked. And Sidner shoots. Yes. A two-pointer for Sidner. Manuel back in the lead by a pair. Gilkey. And Folk outside. Sutter step shot by Folk. Block. Wilson takes it down. The Rams up tempo the game now. Booth. And the Manuel fans too. Yoki at pick one, ducks to the left. Momentum has really turned Manuel's way. They definitely have the better of the second quarter. Folk between the rings. Remember, Darrell Williams out with three fouls. John Young wouldn't take it. Folk tries outside. That's where they miss Williams, right there. Nathan sends it ahead to Collins. Collins wheels by his man for a pop that's missed. Yoki. That's the ball under control. Wyatt wants that ball in the block. Guarded by Wilson now. And Darrell Williams went outside. He could score since he's been out. That's what the contest need right there. And Darrell Brown hit it. Look at Howard Nathan push the ball ahead. Booth stopped right there. Let's go. Advantage of having a guy like Booth in there. He could score inside or outside. Ten for Booth. Guilty all the way. Kicked away from him. 2.24 to play in the first half. Manuel leads by four. And a whistle and a timeout on the court. We'll be back at the Assembly Hall in our fourth quarter final with the Manuel Rams in the lead. One of your network sponsors is Country Company. Tony along with Coach Bill Geis and Jim Albrecht in the second quarter. Coach, your impression so far? Well, with Williams on the bench, it's hurting East Aurora a lot because uh, Manuel's able to play that 2-3 zone, keep three, four, maybe even five players around Wyatt, and they're daring East, uh, East Aurora to shoot from the outside. And, uh, well, he made a shot the last time, but they really missed him. Williams has got to get back in there and uh, give him that outside shot that they, they need. Aurora and Manuel trying to join the final four. And tomorrow's games will be seen throughout Italy, as well as on our statewide network, starting at 11 a.m. And then our 6 o'clock session, the championship game after that. Thomas Wyatt, baseline, steps in, rolls off. He's got it back, he goes again. Great hustle. I tell you, Booth was a little lucky there. He's being very aggressive for a kid with two fouls. And with 1.56 to go. Manuel leading by two. Aurora had a great trap there, and what uh, Nathan did is he tried to get out of there, and he stepped out of bounds. We can't see it there. The official was right in front, but he was there, and he saw it. Now the Rams will get Lynn Collins back in. See, Nathan's only 5'10", and he's being trapped by somebody who's 6'5", and he's got arms uh, that make him appear about 6'8", or so. Guilty triggers. Tomcat shoots for the tie. Bang! They need that. They need that outside shooting. Yoki gives him the tie. Way up ahead is Wilson. He's inside. He missed from point blank. He's got it back. Wilson a third time. And Manuel with a minute and a half has the ball. Good match up here. Collins goes to the right against Yoki. Booth wants for the ball. Nathan is tripped. The defensive work by Daryl Brown. Now the Tomcats can take the lead. Excellent game. Thomas Flint, 45 in for East Aurora. They go, it's never been a bad idea to go on for the last shot with your, uh, your shooter on the bench in foul trouble. That would be Darrell Williams. The clock is there. The game is tied. Who will it be advancing to the final four? So Frank, we talked about the matchup problem that East Aurora had on defense with uh, Wilson in the game. Wilson's listed at 6'8", and that, uh, he's got a man 6'1", guarding him. The Tomcats step out of bounds. And now 
now at 37 seconds. Will the Rams go for one? Dick Van Zion changes. Wilson out into the game. Demetrius Clement. If you're a Peoria fan, you don't want Booth to pick up his third foul here in the last 37 seconds. And if you're a basketball fan, you'll have to stick around and see how this one comes out. Nice defensive play by Flint. He gets it into the block to Wyatt. He's fouled by Mason. Thomas Wyatt, what an active sophomore. You know, what, 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 well, there's a lot of nice things about him, but I was going to say what the nice thing about him is when the ball's passed to him, he really attacks it. He goes after it hard because he wants it, and then, of course, once he gets it, he knows what to do with it. But that's what created that foul. If he waits for the ball, Nathan sneaks in there and gets the steal. He went after the ball, we get a foul on Nathan. In the super sectional, he was 8 for 17 from the field, 7 out of 8 from the foul line, 23. Average is 24. He shoots 77% at the line. That's good stuff in anybody's league. <laughs> I'm criticizing the way he shoots. <laughs> I mean, it really does not. Fundamentally, it's not a very sound shot, but the darn thing goes in, like you say, 77% of the time, and his field goal percent is very high also. He's one out of two. Collins has it. The Tomcats by one. The Rams could take the lead. Fifteen seconds. Sizzling first half action. Somebody to clear out. Four. Collins with three. Rolling off. Rebound to Tomcat. They will go in at halftime in the lead. And here's the score after the first half. East Aurora 34. Peoria Emanuel 33. One of your network sponsors is Illinois Beef Council. There's your score at the end of the first half of play. They say that speed kills. It's also <laughs> fun to watch. I'll tell you, a lot of court savvy, and the teams are going up and down the court here at the Assembly Hall in this last quarter final. Not much to choose in the first half. No, it really has been fun to watch. And uh, fouls are a problem here for both teams, I think. Williams has been on the bench for most of the second quarter with three, although East Aurora is winning by one. I think it's a big plus for them, although the minus is he still has three fouls. He can't take them away. Booth has two. He played with two fouls most of that uh, first half and uh, he didn't pick up that third. That's an advantage there, but I think it's something that we have to watch in the second half. Do you change your defense and your style because of foul trouble? Do you, do you switch if you're the coach? You tell well, him to back off? That's, that's what Manuel did is uh, uh, he switched uh, Booth onto another player, a player that's not as effective as Wyatt, and then, of course, he's got Wilson coming off the bench. That really helps to have a guy 6'8 can do that. What surprised you most about the first half, Coach? Uh, nothing really surprising because I expect all the up running up and down. What was kind of interesting is at halftime, the two officials were standing out at half court, and they were very happy the thing was over. I mean, they're sweating. They worked very hard. So they need this break a lot more than the players, I think. Interesting to me that David Booth came back into the ball game with six minutes to go in the second quarter and stayed in the rest of the way in the first half. And he was fouls. an active player. Uh, there were a couple times there where I kind of held my breath thinking, geez, is he going to pick up that third one? So it's like he figured, hey, I'm going to play the game. If they call it, they call it, but I'm not going to stand around. We're going to have a lot of fun in the second half. But right now, let's go to the court, Art Kimball. Frank and uh, our guest is Grail Gilkey. You heard his son's name several times and watched him perform in the first half. And uh, Grail is a former assistant coach at uh, Aurora East and a member of the faculty. And uh, I, I heard the story on your Grail that you were a West Aurora Blackhawk, went to the state tournament in 58, played, you guys finished fourth. But your wife was captain of the cheerleaders at East High, I understand. Yes, she was a cheerleader at East, and she graduated there the same year I graduated from West. So uh, uh, we had a little natural rivalry. <laughs> you, you didn't realize how deeply we researched these <laughs> interviews, did you? <laughs> I think probably when uh, when Neil Orman gets on the on the uh, on the path, he's uh, he spreads quite a bit around. Well, he does. Neil, of course, one of the radio guys from Aurora. Grail, well, what about the first half of this ball game? You and I were talking, it's a tremendous game, but the fact that uh, Darrell Williams is out foul trouble almost four minutes and uh, the Tomcats survived without him in there and didn't lose any ground has to be encouraging. I think it was a big factor. When he, uh, when he went out with four and a half or five minutes to go, it, uh, it's, uh, Fiori Man is the type of team, if they get you uh, down by 10 or 12 yeah. or 14 at the half, they can, uh, they can assert a lot of things. And uh, being able to stay in the game and, and even have the lead at halftime has to be a big factor as far as East is concerned. And 
and give them a lift uh, coming out for the second half. Well, of course, you've lived with this run and gun type of play. You were an assistant to Ernie Canisto at RR East for a number of years, and you fellas played the same way, but when you play that way, the game has a very unpredictable quality, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. Uh, and I, I think that uh, Scott has done such a remarkable job uh, without great shooting. Yeah. Uh, these kids are not, they're, they're not knockout shooters. And they, uh, he, he, is, he has blended an offense uh, so well that, uh, that, that they've really had a very successful year without, without uh, five men that really go out and shoot the basketball well because I think the thing he does, he, he predicates so much of uh, his game on defense. They, add, they, they work a full ball game on defense or they're with him on the bench. So uh, this, that's a big factor. Yeah, this community, the community of Aurora, really gets behind his representatives in the state tournament play. A massive crowd following East down here tonight. When West Aurora makes it, we see the same thing. Uh, I know that uh, Peoria Emanuel has a great following. This game is extremely enthusiastic because both crowds are very enthusiastic. They are. They, they really get behind uh, their ball clubs and, and support them uh, very well. And it's, it's, been a, it's really been a plus for our school. Uh, to have a have a team down here. It's been 16 years, and, and uh, we were certainly ready to have one again. Of course, you have one of the great facilities in the state too, up there at East High. I love that gym. <laughs> I, I uh, even to go in and watch a game. I just I think it's a great uh, great spot. And any any time any gym has is is that spacious and also has uh, four sides. I like a uh -huh, I like yeah, a high right, school right. gym with four sides. Ray, well, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us. Good to see you again. Best of wishes to you. I thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Real guilty, a faculty member at Aurora East, but a former assistant coach. Now let's go back to the bench and Frank Bassoni. Thank you very much, Art. The Tomcats of East Aurora leading Peoria Manual 34 to 33. Interesting to note that two of the Manual players, Lynn Collins and David Booth, will go to Hawaii and Australia to Fiji Islands along with Alfonso Ellis and Eric Anderson that are in that in the tournament with a association of amateur athletics and that will happen in July and August a great honor for those players we'll come back at the halftime for the second half but right now let's pause for these messages the sales and Rock Island won earlier tonight East St. Louis Lincoln was a winner and we don't know yet who will join them it will be East Aurora or Peoria Emanuel the first half a play not a lot to choose here are your stats 47 percent shooting for east aurora 14 of 30 for the rams 50 percent look at the free throwing one of four for manual six of eight for the tomcats rebound slight edge to the rams good offensive board work turnovers a lot looking at the stats you think the game was close right <laughs> that's exactly what we have let's take a look at the individual scoring look at thomas wyatt's first half 17 points for the sophomore center who averages 24 plus. Williams with seven, three fouls. That's a key. Gilkey off the bench with four. Folk, Young, and Brown with two each. Thomas Wyatt, a great first half. I think a key there, too, is he has no fouls. And he's up there on the press, putting all that pressure on. He hasn't picked up any fouls. That's a plus. David Booth got two fouls and 10 points. Lynn Collins, the All-State guard, with 10 points. Ken Sidner, eight. Clements with four. And Wilson with one. So Darrell Williams will check, check and see. He'll likely be back in that starting lineup for the Tomcats here in the second half. And he's a very big factor in the game because he's Mr. Outside for this East Aurora team. But the question I'd like to have answered, I'm sure we're going to have an answer this half, is will East Aurora wear down Manuel a little bit? I think East Aurora is deeper. They're uh, playing nine or ten players. Peoria Manuel uh, gets four players that stay on the court almost all the time because most of their, their scoring is coming from three players really and they're on the as you mentioned they're on the court a lot and uh, with all that pressure it's going to be interesting to see if they do slow down a little bit I know Collins was very tired in that first half one little bit of difference is that uh, Manuel had a pretty easy game in the super got to rest some of their players and won by 20 where the Tomcats went into overtime to beat friends but of course these young legs and bodies <laughs> rebound in a hurry and the adrenaline flows so maybe tiredness won't be a much of a factor after all we're not talking about you and i trying to bounce <laughs> back after a couple of days i agree with you i think these, being down here your, your adrenaline takes you uh, a long long way east aurora won games this year by 64 58 and 55 they've seen clean some people peoria manual demolished cincinnati molar by 50 in one of their games he took Ottawa apart by 94 to 58, so both of them piling up points in big numbers is the point we're making. 
and in this game, the defenses are so crucial. Yeah, and, and, and with this, I think uh, East Aurora, both of them, they play the game one way. And then it doesn't make any difference whether they're playing a real tall team, a quick team, whether they're up, down. I mean, they're going to press, they're going to run. That's the way they've been coached, and they're going to play that way. And uh, that's what we've seen. We've got two teams the same style, and it's a heck of a matchup. The Tomcats average more than 80 points a game. The Rams, 77. That's the kind of game we're looking at here. The final half. Sidner's open for Manuel. And in the first five seconds, the Rams take the lead back. Liam Reese Aurora is not starting. I think uh, he's, uh, well, he's, he's only one down. He figures, let's see how long he can go without him in there and save him. What a great half by Wyatt. Guilty gets open and missed. Now there's a whistle and a foul. Wyatt would have had the rebound, but uh, I think his arm got pushed aside and his uh, official, uh, Kurt Anderson, caught it. Saw so Scott Martin there, the Tomcats. Yeah, let's go. He's got Gilkey in the ball game. This is play two, he called out. Play two, he threw it right at you. Yep. That's not play two. Here comes Sidner. Inside Hendricks missed. Sidner got the ball to Hendricks in good shape. Couldn't get the rebound, the layup to go. And Mark Oliver comes to the Tomcat. Kenny Gray, wing right. Wyatt moves the feet, then shoots. I think that's a little bit beyond his range. In a game against Downers Grove North, he had 36 points and 16 rebounds. We're talking of a sophomore here. That's what's great. One of the better players in the state. Boost, nice catch and turn. Nathan grabbed the rebound. Manuel, the only hoop in the half. To the baseline. Now the Rams by three. Manuel plays man to man. Wyatt loose. Couldn't get it. Rounds got it up. And Manuel's on the run. Three on two. Collins, yes. The great shot because he avoided the charge. Guilty was trying to set up for a charge and he couldn't get it. Great body control. And the Rams off to a great start in the third quarter. East Aurora calls timeout and one of your network sponsors, the American Dairy Association of Illinois. Darrell Williams back in the game for East Aurora. And there's David Booth making sure he doesn't get the third foul. It's, it's a very, very disciplined play on his part is when not to reach in or when not to try for a block. East Aurora got five down and Darrell Williams checked back into the game. He's got three fouls and the ball there. There's a shot. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you'd think he'd want to get loose or something to get back in. He gets back in, he gets the first shot and puts it down. He's got nine. Wyatt. And Williams, the leading scorers for the Tomcats. Nice rebound by Williams. Immediately a basket and a rebound, and here he comes. He's a factor, isn't he? Oh, is he a player? Mark Oliver's outside with him. Wyatt goes to the right side of the lane. Look at Williams go inside. He hits a shot outside, makes the steal, comes back down and sets the post. Well, I said this earlier about Booth, it's so nice to have somebody who can score inside as well as out, and Williams is doing the same thing. Of course, Williams is a much shorter player, but he does have great leaping ability, and he can take advantage of that inside. We're at the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana, where the first basketball game was played in March of 63. Wyatt knocked one in off the glass. See, Wyatt attacked that ball when it was thrown into him. That's what I really like about him. There's a whistle. Looks like uh, Howard Nathan went down. Gloria Emanuel will keep control of the ball. Wyatt has so many things going for him. He has 19 in the game. He's 6'5". Yeah, I think Wyatt is kind of holding his throat and taking a drink of water there. I think he might have caught an elbow or something in the throat. Dick Van Tyre got up and asked what was going on. Well, I think he thought that Wyatt was just taking time to get a drink. Howard Nathan is the ball tipped away from him, but Sidner picks it back up. Manual by one. Collins. 
you know, Collins resisted the temptation to shoot that three-pointer. Instead, he dribbled it in, got about three or four feet closer, and it took a much better and a much surer shot. He has 14. Darrell Williams answers. Miss. Daniel runs. Collins transition. Sidner steps in, is stripped. Beautifully done by the Tomcats. Defensive hand. Oliver strolls it up. Anything other than flat out blip. Looks like a stroll in the park. These two teams really could turn them on. Williams. Somebody got a hand on it. Collins goes for the ball. But Williams has got it back. Stop and pop. Here he comes again. Can't give him that many chances. East Aurora within one. David Booth. Short. Look at the seal out job, but Manuel still got it. And now Mark Oliver flies to the left. Tomcat shoot for the lead. Williams goes inside. Charging. That's a good call, I thought. Could see him set up there. I don't think Williams saw him because he went around uh, wide, I think it was. But he, had, he was set. This is a crucial play in the game because it's the fourth foul on Darrell Williams. He's trying to do too much. Well, that really hurts us, as we said. What a major factor in the game. Defensively, rebound-wise, shooting-wise, and now he's got to sit again. we got four minutes to go in the third quarter. The Tomcats were down by five when Williams came in. He got him back to within one. Freshman Howard Nathan to Collins. Clement might have walked, got away with it, and drilled it. Demetrius Clement. Six points for Clement. Fultz pulls up with a 10-footer, it's down. And now the points are being racked up. Foul on Wyatt. David Booth had the ball and got slapped. There's Tom Wilson, who started his basketball career at Peoria Central High, a team that was rated number one most of the season and who beat Peoria Manuel twice before losing in the sectional finals. Chuck Fisher had another great club this year. The pressure all out by East Aurora. Collins good with the ball. Sidner, shot. Ken Sidner. Up to 14 for Sidner. He had 25 in the super. There's your score. 3.15 to play, third quarter. It's been tight all the way. Roy Emanuel seems that their defense here is suffering a little bit. I know, uh, oh, nice pass. Was that a great pass, and Daryl Brown got it down. Did you see who threw that, Frank? Well, if it was Wyatt, you sure don't expect that from him. Let's take a look. And it was. Look at that double pump. Nice strong move, Daryl Brown. And I couldn't see his number there. Is that Wyatt? It's a heck of a pass. Third foul on David Booth. Manuel's key performer. What I was going to say before is Nathan and Collins are both very tired. And they're playing the top of that 2-3 zone. And really those perimeter players for East Aurora can do what, about what they want as far as shooting the ball from out there. The only problem with that is their best shooter happens to be on the bench right now. So Nathan and Collins are kind of taking a breather there and they're getting away with it. John Young checks back in for East Aurora. He's 28 and 1. Here comes Nathan. Now three minutes to go in the third. The game is tied. Lynn Collins to Tom Wilson on the block. He couldn't get it, but he fouled. Thomas Flint might have got him. Wilson, 6'8". Then gets a couple of instructions. He played all this way. All the action. The game, even. <laughs> I think you wonder, why did they do that the first two and a half quarters, huh? It is kind of out this way. The Chicago audience might have a couple of alumni watching tonight. Jack Brickhouse, an alum of Peoria Manual, 
and Chicago Bears tackle Kurt Becker on the long of East Aurora. Listen to the crowd. This is really fun. I mean, this is, uh, as I mentioned before, old-time enthusiasm. We've got a sea of red behind us, and the East Aurora people are really getting into it even more so now as the game's winding down. Enthusiasm is free, and the game is tied. Wilson can't connect to the foul line, and Booth has the rebound. See, that shot's open. They just have to hit it. Clement shoots. Too long. Nice rebound by Wyatt. Clements forgot to follow a shot. Good call. Demetrius Clements tried to pick up a charge. The official says he was late. Well, what happened is I believe the player was in the air when he set up. Maybe we'll see it here on a replay. He's in the air then, seeing he's got to give him room to come down, and he didn't. Therefore, it's a call. He was set up. But you've got to give him room to come uh, come down. Like I said, it was a very good call. Colts is 23. Manuel's playing a 2-3 zone. Remember, Darrell Williams out of the game for East Aurora with four fouls. Clint shot blocked by Booth. Ooh, that was nearly Booth's fourth. Colts has it back. Clint takes it into Wyatt. And it's a turnover to Peoria Manuel. I think both teams are suffering a little bit from the pace of this game. There's a, uh, a couple of uh, turnovers that I don't think uh, are real smart, if I can use that term. And I think they're, they're a little bit tired, and I think they ought to regroup a little bit and concentrate a little more. Manuel got 10 Sidner back in the game. Clements against the pressure. 2.05 to go as Collins pulls up with a one-hander. Can't hit. Normally, I think that shot goes down. I think Lynn's a little bit tired, and a little bit of, there's a little bit of zip missing from those legs. Been frozen on 45 for a little bit, both teams. Look at East move the ball around the manual zone. They'd love to get it into Wyatt. Booth now fronts it. The Tomcats need an outside shot. Pulls, pulls the trigger. Uh, it was a three. And that's the size of the lead. A minute and a half in the third. Wild pass by the Rams. And Collins, I think, is, is just a little tired. I mean, that was, he had the right idea, but he just lost control of the ball. 48 to 45. I think he used to go for one. 100. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, there he is. <laughs> really gave him an outside shot when they needed it. Well, now Wyatt goes back inside. Spectacular tip in. I think Kenny Gray got it. Aurora by five with the ball. Turnover. John Young and momentum has gone to the Tom Tap. Mark Oliver sets up. There's your clock. What a spectacular tip in. I think all he was trying to do is keep the ball alive, but you know, when you work that hard, sometimes the right thing happens. Shot is missed by Oliver. Blocked by Booth the next time. Collins climbs the table. The only problem with the block is that he blocked it out of bounds rather than keep it in play. 38 seconds. Now will they go for one? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Scott Martin yells, get the ball outside. Wyatt sees an opening, though. And the Rams have it. Three on two. Collins dishes to Booth. Booth. Goal tending. Goal to Booth. Booth with 12. Let's see why if they're playing. Does he ever get tired? And he's done a great job of controlling the inside. Booth got 40 in the super. He's got 12 right now in this one. So Wyatt, he plays the point on that press. He, he has not sat down for a second in this game. And he looks uh, fresh, uh, just as fresh as when the game started. Darrell Brown and Garen Gilkey back in for the Tomcats. The Rams are going to get John Deal, 14, 5'8", senior, on. Look at the pressure by Manuel. Three-point Aurora lead. 
Third quarter winding down. Who will get to the final four? Both in trouble. Ball is loose. The Rams have a shot. Collins missed it. Three seconds. Two. They won't get a shot. At the end of three quarters, still anybody's game. East Aurora in the lead. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. If the game is decided by a basket, remember the tip-in. Kenny Gray, 31, comes in here. Now watch this, Coach. See, all he was trying to do is to keep the ball alive. He couldn't grab it, but he could get in there with one hand. He just wanted to keep it alive, hoping that maybe a teammate could pick it up, and it, and it winds up rolling into the hoop for him. Underhanded, he smacked it. It hit the board and went home. It's a lucky play, but, you know, you make your own luck sometimes with some extra hustle. East Aurora with a three-point lead of the ball to start the fourth quarter. Full. No goal. Charging foul on James Fultz. A tough break for the Tomcats and a good one for Manuel. Well, it's a smart defensive play. Anytime you have somebody penetrating in, to have somebody fly in front of them and try to take that charge, because as happened here, even if the thing goes in, it's not going to count. Trapping in the back now, East Aurora. Simon clears to boost. He's open. Drop down past Sidner. Great pass. Great pass. Defensive man came out, out on him to challenge the jumper, and he dropped it down to the open man. 16 for Sidner. Fultz has given the Tomcats a good game while Darrell Williams is out with four fouls. When will he come back? Well, I think as long as they're... Another charge. I think as long as they're winning and as long as it's close, I think you're going to see him sit down as long as possible. But if Manuel makes another run at him, you're going to see him off the bench real quick. That charge was on Mark Oliver, 21. There's your stats through the third quarter. 50% shooting for the Rams, 42. Aurora's got five, four more shots. There's your foul shooting. Manuel only one of six, rebounding slightly to the Rams. A free throw percent uh, for Manuel. That could hurt at the, at the end of the game if they got to go to the line. Boost. The Rams take the lead back. 51-50 at the seven-minute mark. As soon as you said that Booth has been quieter, East has done a good job at him. He said two quick ones. Gilkey, it came out. And Booth gets the defensive board up to Collins. That looked right there by Gilkey. Sidner again. Manuel's in a streak. The Rams hit a pair. Sidner with 18. He's a great stand-up shooter. He plants his feet and lets fly. Fultz goes by a man on the right and stops. Now he goes again. Sidner blocked it. Deal. Nice play by Wyatt. He anticipated that and got the ball. Manuel will have it. Flint, 45. For East Aurora. And Kenny Gray, 31. I'm back in the game. The Tomcats rotate people. Now John Young returns. Folks get the rest. I think this is a good idea. He just put a lot of fresh legs in the game to keep the pressure on Manuel. Uh, inbound play. Booth missed it. It's a great call by uh, Coach. If it was a, a set play and a, it was properly executed, it just didn't go down. Wyatt double team and Clement stole it. Manuel a three-point lead. Sidner didn't. Collins backed up. Man to man by the Tomcats. Sidner goes to the high post. Booth comes out. Sidner shoots. Yes. Manuel's got a couple hot shooters right now. And Sidner and, uh, and Booth. And East Aurora knows that they call timeout. 5.38 to play in the game. Manuel has taken the lead. One of your network sponsors is Country Company. Thanks, David. Manuel has run 10 unanswered.
points at the Tomcat. Here's one of the shots that didn't go. How is that out of bounds play lob that Booth had? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody reads lips, do they? Coaches go through the agonies of winning and losing. All the little things. They remember them all. Well, you set up an out of bounds play for an easy shot, and sure enough, it works, and you get that easy shot, and things just doesn't roll in. Manuel has had 10 straight points, helped by 10 of 13 shooting for Ken Sidner. The Rams up by five. I don't know much, how much longer uh, Scott Martin can afford to keep Williams on the bench. He's still there. At 35, Daryl Brown comes on. Now Williams will get up. Five and a half to play in the game. Last time he came in, he instantly helped his team. Sidner wants off the high post. Clement at top. That's a skip pass to Sidner. He lets it fly. You're going to get hot. Get hot in the fourth quarter. He had 25 in the super. He's up to 22 now. Manual by seven. Wyatt wheels inside. Great move. Thomas Wyatt somehow got in there, couldn't go down, but a foul. Well, he drew that foul. He kind of uh, had the ball and jumped into him just a little bit, and uh, the foul was on Booth, right? That's his fourth. The fourth foul on Booth. In the second half, Kenny Sidner is seven out of seven. Here we have the replay. You can see Wyatt go across the lane. Now watch him go into the hoop here and jump into Booth a little bit. And now Williams for East Aurora and Booth with Manuel, each with four fouls. Booth may come out. Well, it wouldn't be a bad play if he did because uh, Manuel's up six right now. You can afford to give him a little breather. That's exactly what Dick Van Syak does as Tom Wilson checks back in. Booth. Four to in the game. Now, East Aurora can't afford this. They've got to have their star in the game with, with four fouls because they're down six. Wyatt missed. 450 left. That's the place in Booth with a kid six eight isn't so shabby either. <laughs> Sidner in the corner, Collins in the top for T. Look at Sidner exchange size and all oh, fingers. Got it down and count. Sidner's on fire. Eight in a row in this half. What freed, Sid, what freed Sidner for the shot is a very good pick. Maybe we'll see this on the replay. There's the screen, and watch the East Aurora player just runs the play, uh, the manual player over. So they get the hoop. Now they're going to the line for a one and one. Could be a four-point play. Great reaction. 31, Kenny Gray. Back in the game for the Tomcats. This is a big play, Frank. This is a big goal from six up to ten up if he puts this one and one down. And then with 434 to go, that's an that's awful big lead. Deal missed. Manuel's free throw shooting has been awful. The rest of their game, fine. Look at Darrell Williams. He knows he has to help bring his team back. Both outside. Can't hit. Rebound. Tomcat keep it and a foul on the Rams, John Deal. But Williams has got to be careful of it, not try to do too much himself. Because he drew that fourth foul on himself by trying to do too much and he charged into somebody. He's got to let his teammates do something too and try to get him the ball for the open shot at the right time, rather than do too much dribbling himself. In 87, East Aurora lost in the super sectional in overtime to Elgin. This year they won in the super sectional in overtime. They're 28 and 1, and here's Darrell Williams. You mentioned before, Frank, that they, they've won some games big, but they've also won some games by uh, a closer margin. So they know what it's like to play under pressure. Officials just talking to both teams there a little bit about some extra pushing and stuff like that. You don't want a dumb foul to put a good player out or uh, out of the game. Not now. we got a great game with four minutes to go. He's just warning the players. Good move by the officials. Williams has 12. 13. It's a six-point manual lead. 
The pressure is still on. Faster than dueling banjos. Down pairs. Wilson. Tom Wilson with a slam. Manual by eight at the four minute mark. Folks comes across. Foul on the Rams. Ron Sidner. These teams will not relent. No. <laughs> I'll tell you, if this ends up with a free throw shoot this last four minutes, uh, I don't like Manuel's chances. I think they'll be glad they have that eight-point lead. Although I, I can't see that free throw shooting continuing. Can you think? I mean, they're, they're a much better team shooting free throws throughout the whole year. Both teams have averaged 64% on the season. Colts with 72 percent or got that. Two off, plus two. Wyatt's been a little quiet at that point. He hasn't got a steal in a while. He gets one and puts one down, and that could spark the feet for our team. Well, you make a good point. Teams can score in a hurry. 61-55. Mandolin White. Will they go to the final four? The winner of this game plays East St. Louis Lincoln. In the first game tomorrow, the sales against Rock Island. Collins wouldn't go, and he was held. Lynn Collins, held by Daryl Brown. Foul on Williams, I think. There it is. It is on Williams, and that's five. The big blow to the Tomcats. He only played two minutes. He came back in. He goes out with 13 in the game. He's such an aggressive player. It's got to be hard for him to, to you know, to, to calm down or not to play at 100% because that's the way he always plays. But well, this puts all the more pressure on their sophomore Thomas Wyatt because he's, of course, not only their big scorer, but now they'll need the outside shot as well. And Scott Martin turns to Garen Gilkey on the bench. Well. They've been a good team all year. And this had, uh, Williams and White have been their leaders. What's got to happen now is somebody has to come up with an outside shot or two, whether it's one guy or two guys. But uh, I don't know if Wyatt's going to be able to do too much in there because they're really going to crowd around him. Lynn Collins hit one to give Manuel a seven-point lead. Another thing we might mention here, too, is that East Aurora is not a three-point shooting team. They've only had, uh, they only made five all year. And they were over three in the Super on three. 3.30 left, Gilkey. Manuel, three out of nine foul shooting. Aurora's 12 of 15. So you're right. Now they were one out of seven. They're two for two in the last two. And those are the ones that count as the Rams keep rezoned. That means there might be a jump shot open here for the Tomcats. And I'll be surprised if they can get it into Wyatt because they're really collapsing around them. Oliver, 21. They got it into Wyatt that time, and he's fouled by Wilson. It's a two-shot foul. They say something, <laughs> they do just the opposite. Well, let's take a look at Wyatt inside. Wyatt goes after the ball hard. Nice little move in here. Obvious foul. Surprised they didn't have some weak side help coming over there to cover that baseline because he does like to go that way. What a cool customer this is. The camera can get a close look at, at Wyatt, too. I mean, he, as I mentioned before, he's played the whole game and he doesn't look tired at all. He just looks like he could go out there and, and run another game. He's going for his 22nd point. Look at him. He doesn't look tired, does he? Not at all. Not sure I understand it, but no. he doesn't look tired. He's a sophomore. You'd think that the strength to do something like that, to play a whole game where he plays and not get tired, would come maybe later on with maturity, but he's doing it as a sophomore. Daryl Brown in the game for East Aurora. They're down by only six. 3.15 to go. The Rams save it. Wilson got it on the baseline. He put it up and missed it. Tom Wilson missed, got it back, steps in, scores! 
that was a bad break for East Aurora. But they had uh, they had the rebound and just lost control because the player I think lost his footing and it bounced right to, to Wilson and he gets a uh, chance for a three-point play. Wilson makes the catch here. And there's a missed shot. The East Aurora player has it, but he loses his balance and it goes right to the manual player. And Wilson, who's not a big scorer, averages six and a half a game and a very, very important basket there. Six eight and a junior. He can't get it. Manuel's eight ahead. Three minutes to play. Remember, Williams is out. Wyatt. A foul on Sidner of the Rams. He's got a break there, too, because uh, Wyatt took a very poor shot, or maybe it was a pass, but uh, whatever it was, either a poor shot or a poor pass, because he was off balance, falling down. And they got a chance for a one-on-one -on -one here. Three fouls on Sidner. Manuel's done very well with two fouls. Yes, they have. Wilson come into the middle in a clutch situation. Well, I think with Booth going out, I'm not saying Wilson's as good as Booth, but Wilson does give him the, the rebounding power, and I think Sidner has certainly picked up the offense of, uh, uh, well, with, with Booth out, that takes away from their offense, but, but Sidner's done such a great job, they haven't missed him. Free throw down by John Young. And Mark Oliver gets back in the game for East. Manuel hasn't played Howard Nathan much in the second half either. They played Beal. Still plenty of time left here. We just got under three minutes to go on the six-point game. <laughs> just because a team doesn't shoot a lot of threes doesn't mean you can't make one once in a while either. Sidner. Manuel he works the clock. They lead by six. Lynn Collins goes down the lane. Foul is first. No goal. If you're going to foul somebody, I wouldn't foul Collins. If you're an East Aurora fan, I mean, if you're a manual fan, that's, I think that's a good move, but he's a cool customer at that line. The Rams like the ball in the fans. There's 45, Thomas Flint, 5'11", senior. Are they, the Tomcats were advertised as using their bench and making a lot of moves with it. And they've done exactly that. One and bonus, Lynn Collins. 75 percent of Collins hit them both. If you're going to foul somebody, uh, I'd foul Wilson. He's only he's shooting less than 50% for the for the year. You can be sure East Aurora knows it. Two and a half to play now. Flint and another foul on Manuel. And that's something that's got to make the Manuel bench win. Well, what's the problem here is that you stop the clock and you let him go to the line to get two points. Uh, with an eight-point lead and 2.29 to go, East Aurora isn't really your opponent. The clock is. So you, what you want to do is to wind that clock down. Manuel doesn't have to score another point if they can get that 2.29 off the clock. Thomas Flint. Got it. And East has been tough at that line all night. Seventeen out of twenty at the free throw line for the team. Well, these officials have worked a great game, haven't they? I mean, they're still talking to the players. They're racing up and down. They stayed with it all the way. Fultz is open. Wilson horses on the rebound. Out of bounds. To East Aurora. <laughs> the official went to signal the other way, but he realized his mistake and got a few people excited because it was obviously off the uh, manual player. Daryl Brown's a substitute. And there you can hear, they're yelling 41. That's Thomas Wyatt's number. Inside it goes. Brown puts the ball on the deck. Now puts it up. And in. Five-point lead for the Rams. There's Sidner in the back. Falling out of bounds. He walks. 
turnover with two ten left. It's a five point game. David yeah. Booth gets off the manual bench. There was a little something I don't think anybody saw. Uh, the manual players and coach wanted to push on that. And uh, Coach Van Sayak got up to gripe about it. And Kurt Anderson, the official, just kept his back to him because he didn't want to see him up, because he didn't want to call the key. A good, good non-call by the official. The Tomcats try to carve the lead down to three. It was eight just a few seconds ago, wasn't it, Frank? It was. Flint comes out on the right wing. Wyatt posts up. There's the shot. Rebound Booth is fouled. David Booth went to the glass. Let's see if the foul's on Wyatt. I, I bet it is, but that's a tough call. There's the shot. Wyatt's going strong for oh, that's a good call. Good call. He went over his back. But Wyatt does attack that thing when he sees it. Only the second foul on Thomas Wyatt. Gloria Manuel, two timeouts left. David Booth, he's a senior, headed for DePaul. First teamer, all state. Missed it, Clements rebound. Ball loose, Clements forces it out of there. Manuel keeps the ball in a five point lead. They're in their four corner offense now. And they want the ball to Lynn Collins here. Yeah, he'll control it. When he wants to pick it up, he'll get it to somebody else and they get it right back. Collins finds the man along the baseline as Sidner comes back out. Good play, good play. Again, you're battling the clock, not East Aurora. And Sidner had good recognition. He knew where everybody was. Got the ball back out. Foul on the East, Mark Oliver. The Tomcats have lost only once. The Rams have lost the four. Look at the coach Scott Martin still working that baseline of that uh, bench. Mocking everybody over there. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Frank. I was, I was watching the Peoria coaches. Collins hits another free throw. Manual by six. Kenny Gray. Collins still perfect at the free throw line. He's the man you want on that line if you're manual. In the heart of the game. Now East Aurora. Seven down, a minute ten to go. They need a hoop. A steal by Deal. Up ahead to Sidner, I'll have a layup. Missed it! And a foul on the Tomcat. Sidner, like he hit his head. That's a very hard foul by these two are players. Foul will be on Oliver. shakes it off. The foul saved an easy layup. Sidner had a brilliant shooting game. Except from the free throw line. He had it all going in the second half though. Manual crowd senses now that they could move to the final four. Sidner got all net. Nine point game. Is there enough time for the Tomcats? Wyatt has the ball poked away from him from behind. And a whistle you couldn't even hear. Now it's a foul on Wyatt again, I believe. He had the ball knocked away from him and he went over to try to steal it back and he hit him. Manuel got fourth in the state in 72. They made the Elite Eight in 82. They lost in the quarterfinals last year. And they're hooping it up now. Oh, 
waiting out the last few minutes. I'm just looking at the manual players right now, and it appears that he's got his best five, for, the best five free throw shooters on the, uh, in the game right now. And of course, that's what you want with less than a minute to go. Demetrius Clement hit that. Moran have a 10-point advantage. Look at the woman in the middle, head down, doesn't want to watch. Both are good. Moran free throwing early was terrible, and late it was great. Clint gets free. Wyatt finds Gilkey. Missed it. Wyatt tip one. Gilkey's got it back. Only 38 seconds. Center tipped at it. Out of bounds to the Tomcat. Manuel's 35 seconds away from another day. East Aurora scores. I'm not sure how many timeouts they've got. They've got to they score, stop the clock, and set up their press. Gilkey tried a three. Rebound Brown. Inside, rejected by Booth. Return to Sender. Link to the court to Sidner, an easy one. Well, when you see the score, if you haven't seen the game, you won't realize how close it was. Traveling. Ken Sidner, 13 of 16 shooting in the game. 28 points for Sidner. There's timeout on the court. 14 seconds to go, and Peoria Manuel on their way. Let's pause for these messages. Fourteen seconds to go in the game, and Lynn Collins just tied an assist record in the tournament at 15 assists to go along with the rest of the game. And look what David Booth can do on the defense. I wouldn't want to call that for a block or a, uh, a goaltender. The Rams have the reserves in now. Ricky Morgan, 40. James Shuttleworth. Jerry Williams. East Aurora, a fantastic year. We've got a lot of new people in the game right now, Frank. Kind of nice. Both coaches are letting everybody get a chance to, to play a little bit. Lamar Bedford is 51. Paul Purcell. Morgan Miss. Tyrone Savage, 11. Seven seconds. Manuel marching ahead to a victory. With three seconds now left. Have we set up a day tomorrow or what? going to be interesting. Well, you just feel terrible for the teams that lose, but as you said earlier, they didn't lose. No. The other team just happened to be that one. Manuel advances to the final four. There's your final. The Rams win their 28th game, 75 to 62. Scott Martins and Dick Van Sayak. A young coach and a veteran standing quarterfinal game. We'll be back at the Assembly Hall in just a moment. One of your network sponsors, the Illinois Beef Council. Fiori Emanuel scored 28 points in the fourth quarter. Sidner, 28. Collins with 20. Booth with 14. For East Aurora, Thomas Wyatt with 22. Darrell Williams with 13 and fouled out. Folks with 9. And Brown with 7. And what a pulse pounder of a last quarter final. And that sets up tomorrow. And tomorrow will go like this. St. Francis de Sales, 28 and 1, will go against Rock Island in the first quarter final, 27 and 4. And then East St. Louis Lincoln, 26 and 4, will take on the Manual Rams, 28 and 4, in the second semifinal of the day. So that's it. From the Assembly Hall in Champaign Urbana, Frank Bassoni speaking for Coach Bill Geist and Jim Albrecht. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow at 11 with the final four.